In this video, we're going to take a look at the FX page of the Fairlight CMI30A. This is where real-time control of samples is configured. In the 30A, instruments are made up from one or more samples assigned to different ranges of keys. That mapping is done here. This example shows one of the piano instruments which shipped with the Series 3 CMI in the 80s. Each sample spans three semitones. You can easily change the mapping using the light pen or mouse. I'll play a short page R sequence so you can hear how it sounds out of the box with no effects applied. Effects can be applied to individual samples or to whole instruments. For this demonstration, let's do something to the whole piano. Here we see the effects that can be applied to an instrument. In this first group we see that tuning can be controlled in octaves, semitones or cents. There are two variable Q low pass filters. And something unique to the CMI 30A, a control called goodness. Goodness refers to that je ne sais quoi that gave the Fairlight CMI its characteristic sound in the 1980s. It's an important subject and I think I'll dedicate a whole video to that later on. In the next group we have overall level and attack, hold, decay, sustain, release. The third group is for turning on and off pitch bend, vibrato, tremolo, portamento and glissando. The last group controls those effects. For example you can set vibrato depth, delay and attack. Each group has two columns called value and set. The value column is where you can enter a constant. For example, you might just want to shift everything up a semitone. The set column is where you can specify a controller to change a value in real time. Controllers are usually MIDI controllers that you can twiddle. Let's assign controller 18 to find tuning. MIDI controllers generally output numbers from 0 to 127 and that's okay for controlling the fine tuning in sense but most other real-time effects require a different range of output values. This is where we use the function editor. The 30A makes it easy to design your own functions which take controllers as inputs and output whatever you want for a particular effect. Let's say we want to control the volume of the instrument using the mod wheel. The mod wheel on the CMI outputs a range of about 16 to 60. The level control works from 0 down to minus 99 dBs. So we start by assigning level to the mod wheel, which is controller 1, via a function of our choice, let's say function 5. Now we go to the function editor and select function 5. The input range is set here. And the output minimum and maximum are set here. Now the mod wheel controls the full volume range. We can easily customise the function. You can do the same thing with key velocity so that you get exactly the touch response you want. Next we'll try using key number as a control input to the function we've just created. Now the volume goes up as we go up the keyboard. By changing the curve I can control the level of groups of notes in extreme detail 
even down to single keys. This might look like a graphic equaliser, but it's really something quite different because you can adjust the relative level between high notes and low notes without affecting the tonal quality of the sounds themselves. There's another group of functions which are time-based. These are sort of like LFOs on steroids. You can have a lot of fun with these without injuring your health. In a previous demo video, I made a sample of a saw. I'm going to take that sound now and apply some real-time effects to it using the time-based functions. First I'll put a loop in it so we can sustain it for as long as we want. Now I'm going to patch a one-shot function to the filter. In this case the input to the function is time in milliseconds and being a one-shot the time starts from the note on and stops at the time I specify as the maximum input value for the function. Because we're patched to the filter we need a suitable range for the output. As well as one shot, you can have free running LFOs or LFOs synchronised to note starts. Now I'll split this sample in two across the keyboard and assign a one-shot filter function 1 to the bottom half and one-shot filter function 2 to the top. Finally I'll use a third function to control the level of both halves according to key velocity. Here we go. OK, so what we hear now is the piece playing with the filters closed. First, the filter function for the bass notes. Now that I've got the curve that I want, I'm going to adjust the time base so that the speed of the LFO fits in with the rhythm of the music. Now the top half. Wow. 
Finally, I'm going to use a third function to expand the dynamic range because all the key velocity values are clustered around the 80 to 100 range. I'm going to stretch this out with a function. Well, we've just scratched the surface of what you can do with real-time effect controls in the CMI-30A. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how the CMI-30A brings back the goodness of the sound of the 80s. Thank you.